given as a committee. Uh, the issues that we have before us is based on a report with interim finding and recommendations. What, if any, steps should we be taking? Uh, the report does, in fact, uh, reflect, as we've heard in the testimony, uh, that it was based on uh, statements that were videotaped, so they're not in uh, dispute as to what was actually said. Uh, one on the floor on June 19th uh, directed uh, at least uh, directed toward the president based on the context. Whether it extended to other members, I don't know. But it did, in fact, call out by his name and that uh, in, in relationship whether or not uh, if, if you send the state police out to get me, hell is coming to visit you personally. Without knowing exactly what uh, Senator Boquist meant by that statement, you have to take it at the, at the surface of what, uh, what it presents. Uh, as our counsel stated, the test here is not whether or not something is criminal in action uh, to be a valid threat. Uh, it is a, we're in a civil setting and it is within the employment law and within that as to the requirement and duty of the employer to provide a workplace free of uh, violence or threat of violence or intimidation, et cetera. Uh, so in my looking at that and then looking at the second statement that was made off the floor uh, to the media directed toward the state police uh, as to uh, uh, we, what we've heard, I'm quotable, so here's the quote, send bachelors and come heavily armed. I am not going to be a political prisoner in the state of Oregon. Uh, that it, it's just that simple. Now, what we also have had is that shortly after that, uh, which is reflected in uh, posting that's on OLIS, a email that was purportedly from uh, Senator Boquist to a reporter at the Oregonian, uh, when someone had stated that that threat was thinly veiled, he made it clear that it was not. And that was, I look at those three things, and I come a, a way that the statements that were made by the, uh, Senator Boquist were, in fact, credible threats. What I have difficulty, though, is at this point determining whether or not uh, he still poses a credible threat as he did on the 19th of June. What I want to put on the record and what we've talked about at this point is that we have had situation uh, that has, I think, been modified or has, uh, has uh, died down in the sense of uh, the angst, anxiety of when that statement was made on the 19th. Uh, Council's report to us comes a week later on the 25th of June. Since then, we have had approximately two additional weeks that have occurred uh, since there, and there's been no situation of uh, showing and demonstrating that whatever credible threat there were on those statements, which I have stated, I believe, were in fact credible threats of those being per uh, uh, continued out. Uh, when you look at the context of what those statements and when they were made and what they were a subject matter of that, we know that that question is now moot. Uh, the state police are no longer uh, being requested to uh, bring any of the members who were absent during those nine days uh, to the Capitol. Uh, to do their work. And so to me, that is an action, that is something that has happened uh, beyond, uh, since then that uh, tells me that I believe that uh, the workplace is uh, okay uh, for, employee, uh, for the employees to be in. Uh, I do wanna point out that even though uh, session has ended, we're in our interim, we do in fact have individuals who are in this building uh, five days a week working their jobs either in district uh, for senators or representatives as well as the full-time staff of the legislative assembly. And so I do feel that those things do need to be taken into consideration. I personally, in looking at these recommendations, uh, I came up with a alternative motion uh, that would basically, one, find that the statements of June 19th to be credible threats, but that there has been uh, let me get the term here, uh, that the uh, recommendation of counsel at this point 
uh, should be modified as to what steps should be taken based on new information, testimony, and clarification uh, that has occurred uh, through the not only the hearing today, but what has happened since the uh, in incident occurred. So that's where the chair is at. I do not uh, at this point see uh, that uh, continued threat uh, that was made on the 19th to be present today within the Capitol. I do want to clarify because I've heard members say this, and I think it's important for the rule, uh, for the record to reflect. Our hearing today is not going to the merits of any complaints, and let's say any reports that have been filed that could be turned into a complaint, either a formal complaint that we as a committee would be addressing or an informal complaint that would go through that internal uh, process for informal complaints. Uh, for us to say that we need to have more information before we act on this as to more of the merits, who brought it forward, why did they bring it, is missing the point. This whole exercise that we're going through today is to ensure that the workplace is free of intimidation, threats of violence, while that investigation is ongoing, and to ensuring that everyone who comes to this Capitol, either as an employee, as a member, uh, as a uh, the public, someone who works in this building as a lobbyist, are all free of uh, 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 workplace intimidation or threats of violence. And so I want to make certain that we realize that at some point, it may be that we will be meeting again to look at some specific conduct uh, that will in fact uh, materialize as a formal complaint. What I know at this point is we don't know when that's going to happen or if that's going to happen because the investigation's ongoing. So with that, uh, I, the position I would be taking at this point would be to acknowledge the threats that were made on the 19th to be credible for what they, uh, when they were said and what was, uh, was stated at the time and could in fact uh, cause a reasonable person in the workplace to fear for their own safety or safety of others. Uh, but at the same time, because of the t amount of time that has passed, other factors that have come in play and things that have not come into play uh, do not believe that uh, any additional steps need to be taken as it pertains to uh, Senator Boquist being in the workplace here at the Capitol. So that's where the chair is at.